Hi everyone, in this video we are going to set up an Amazon Linux 2 EC2 instance on AWS and we will be connecting to that instance using SSH. SSH stands for Secure Shell and it is a way to establish a secure connection to a remote device. You can make SSH connections whether you are on a Mac, Linux, or Windows machine. Let's start with a demo of our expected outcome for this video. I already have a running instance on AWS right now and I will make an SSH connection to it from my command line window, which in this case is terminal on my Mac. If you're on Windows 10, you can use command prompt or PowerShell. So here I will type SSH-I followed by the name of my PEM file. This PEM file is currently saved here in my computer and it contains a private key that allows me to connect to my EC2 instance on AWS. Without this key, access will not be granted, so it keeps my EC2 instance more secure from unwanted connections. And then I type the SSH username, which is appropriately named EC2-user for my EC2 instance, followed by the at sign, and then the public IP address of my EC2 instance. I press enter. And now I am remotely connected to my EC2 Linux server on AWS. So even though I am using my own physical machine right now, which happens to be a Mac, what we are seeing here in this command line window is my EC2 Linux instance, which is somewhere in the cloud. So from here, I will be able to create files and directories, install packages and whatnot onto this Linux machine, which is located somewhere else in the world. So let's get started on learning how to set this up for yourself. I've already logged in to my AWS management console and here under services, I'm going to click on EC2. If you don't find it, you can also type EC2 here in the search field. And then let's click on launch instance. Now we select an Amazon machine image template. Let's select Amazon Linux 2. And then we choose an instance type. I'm going to choose t2.micro, which has one CPU and one gigabyte of memory. You can choose something else with higher specs depending on your needs and your budget. Then we click next to configure the instance details. And for this one, I will just keep the default values and I will click on next to add storage. I will stick with eight gigabytes, but you can increase this if you need more space. Again, depending on your needs and your cost considerations. Then I will click next to add some tags. You can use tags to add some fields that describe your EC2 instance. You don't need to do this, but this can be good for the purpose of organizing your instances because these tags let you categorize your instances in different ways. So click add tag and enter a key and a value. I'll type name for the key and Linux web server for the value. So with this tag, my intention is to say that the name of this EC2 instance is Linux web server. You are free to add more tags as desired, and you are free to decide on what keys and values to give those tags. So now let's click next and let's configure a security group for this instance. A security group allows us to set firewall rules so we can control the traffic that comes in and out of our EC2 instance. For example, Instead of allowing everyone to connect to our web server, we can just limit it to specific clients using their IP addresses. So let's create a new security group, but you also have the option to use ones you've made before. Let's change the name to security-group-1, and let's change the description to match that as well. All right, and right here, already this is the rule that I need, so I won't change this anymore. 
This will allow SSH connections to be made to this Linux machine that we are setting up. SSH always uses TCP, and the default port for that is 22. And here under the source column, 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0 means that we are allowing access to our instance from any IP address. In other words, we'll be able to connect to uh, this instance using any computer, provided, of course, that we have the private key that's needed for access. I can also have an optional description for this rule. I will just say SSH from anywhere. So for the purpose of this demonstration, this is the only rule that I need, but we can certainly add more if we need to handle other types of traffic. So now let's click on review and launch. And everything seems to be in order. So let's click launch. And here is the part where we create or select a key pair. A key pair consists of a public key that AWS stores and a private key that you will keep. Together, this key pair will allow you to securely connect to your instance. You can use an existing one, if you've made one before, or you can create a new one, which is what we will do. So I've chosen create a new key pair. Let's name it Linux server key. And then let's download the file. This gives us a file with an extension name of .pem that we can download. So let's save this. Make sure that you store it in a secure, accessible location. You will not be able to download the file again after it's created. So make sure that you don't lose this file because without it, you will not be able to connect to your EC2 instance unless you go through the process of creating a new key to replace the old one. OK, so now that we've downloaded the key pair, let's continue by clicking on Launch Instances. And here we see that it was a success. So now I can go ahead and view my instances. These are all the instances that I've created before. If this is your first time to do so, then you will only see one instance in here. And here is the one that I just created. Here under the name column, we see Linux web server. This is from the tag that we added earlier. And then you might have to wait a bit for the instance state to say running and for the status checks to be completed. And once it is running and completed, you can choose the instance by clicking anywhere in its row if it hasn't been selected yet. And then down here, you will see more details about the instance. If you don't see this, then you might have to wait a bit more for the setup to complete. And then you can refresh your browser window and then click on the instance row again to see all the details. And here in the description tab, in the second column, is my instance's public IP address. Yours is going to say something different since IP addresses are supposed to be unique. You're going to want to copy yours by clicking on Copy to Clipboard. You will need this IP address to connect to your EC2 instance. Now back to your local machine, go ahead and look for your key pair and open up the folder that contains it. By key pair, I am referring to the PEM file named Linux server key that we downloaded earlier. First thing we need to do is to change the permissions on this PEM file. Now, if you are on Windows, please watch this video for the specific steps that you have to make. And then come back here when you're done. You should see the link now, but if you don't, I also have the link to that video in the description below. So here on a Mac, let's open up a terminal window in the same directory that contains the PEM file. Let's change the permissions of our PEM file by entering chmod 400 followed by the name of the PEM file. This modifies the file so that it only has the read permission, and it is only the owner of the file that has that permission. SSH requires that the key be readable only by the owner. OK, so I just attempted to change the permissions, and I don't see any error messages here, so it means that it was a success. And now that we have changed the permissions, we can now connect to the EC2 instance using the SSH command. 
So at this point, the steps will be the same whether you are on a Mac or a Windows machine, specifically a Windows 10 or a Windows 2019 machine, although you might have to manually activate this SSH feature on Windows. So we type SSH-I Linux server key dot pem. Again, we have to be in the same folder that contains the pem file so that we can access it. Otherwise, you will have to specify the path to it. And then we type ec2-user. That is the default SSH username for AWS Amazon Linux machines. And then the at sign, followed by the public IP address of your EC2 instance, which you copied earlier. So it shouldn't be the same as mine. And then press enter. The first time you connect from a specific machine, you will be asked to confirm. So type yes and hit return. And now if you see that the prompt starts with EC2-user, this means that you have successfully connected. You are now in the home directory of your Amazon Linux EC2 instance. When you see this tilde sign, this means that you are in the home folder. And now we can do things on this machine, like make directories, for example. If I type ls, you'll see that I currently don't have anything in my home directory. So I can type mkdir documents. This creates a new folder named documents. And then if I type ls again, you'll see that the new folder is there. Okay, so that's it. We are now remotely connected to our EC2 Linux instance. If you're done and want to close the connection, you can press Control D on your keyboard, or you can simply close the window. Now, a couple of other things to take note of. If you are idle for some time, the connection will time out, which might result in the command line window freezing. So in that case, you might need to just close the current window and then open a new one, and then connect again using SSH. Also, back here in our list of EC2 instances, you can stop running the currently selected instance by going to Actions, Instance State, and then choosing Stop. When an instance is stopped, then you won't be able to connect to it. And then you can start it again by going to Actions, Instance State, and by choosing Start. But take note that stopping and then starting an instance will result in a new public IP address. So this means that you will need to use this new address in order to connect. After starting your instance again, back here in the description, I can copy my new public IP address. So when I connect again using SSH, this is the IP address that I need to use. Everything else, the PEM file and the username ec2-user stays the same. And that's it for this lesson. Please feel free to like and subscribe and to share this video. I hope you learned something new. Thanks for watching.